So what is the Equal Rights Amendment? Well, let's look at the wording. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. It's actually very self-explanatory. Basically, the government can't discriminate against you because you're a guy or a girl. This amendment was the dream of Alice Paul and Crystal Eastman, two early feminists who were able to get it introduced in Congress in December 1923. The bill was then buried in committee in both houses of Congress for 23 years before losing to a vote in the Senate with 38 votes against and just 35 votes in favor. Another bill would then be proposed again and passed in the Senate, but would have a writer added that nullified the equal protection parts. So there goes a second try. But then 1971, the amendment was proposed again by the House. This time, it actually did very well. It passed by the House with 354 votes to just 24. It then went to the Senate and was passed with 84 votes to just 4 on March 22nd, 1972. Now this all sounds great, but there was a catch. You might have noticed it when I said the date. Two congressmen, Senator Sam Irving and Representative Emanuel Seller, got a time limit of seven years for ratification passed. Here's the thing for those that aren't aware. Constitutional amendments are typically passed when two-thirds of both congressional houses pass the proposed amendment, and then three-fourths of the state legislatures ratify the amendment. The Equal Rights Amendment only got 35 by the time of the 1979 deadline, not 38. So the amendment just sat there, dead. Until the 2010s when Nevada and Illinois ratified it. Then in January 2020, it was ratified by Virginia. This means the amendment reached the 38 minimum for ratification. There are now two problems, however. The time limit and the nature of the ratification. The obvious problem is a time limit, because Congress set the limit which should have killed the amendment when the deadline came, because it was not ratified yet. However, there is an argument that Congress can just remove or extend the deadline retroactively because Article 5 of the Constitution, the article that laid out all this framework, doesn't even mention time limits. Now the Justice Department claims that Congress can't just change the time limit afterwards, but no one really knows because this situation has never happened before, and the Constitution doesn't give a straight answer. Now with the time limit discussed, let's talk about the problem with the nature of ratification. Remember when I said that 35 states ratified the amendment before the 1979 deadline? Well, it turns out that five of those states also withdrew ratification before the deadline. You are the states to shame. Anyway, so you would assume that the number of states that ratified the amendment isn't 38, but actually 33, but this is where things get tricky. See, the Constitution also doesn't say if state legislatures are allowed to rescind ratification of a proposed amendment. This has actually happened before with the 14th Amendment, where a few states withdrew the ratification, but because they had previously supported the amendment, Congress just counted them as ratified anyways to get to the three-fourths deadline. So it looks like the Equal Rights Amendment is fine, right? Well, maybe. Now let's just say somehow states are allowed to rescind ratification, even though they probably aren't. If it is decided that state legislatures can rescind the ratification of an amendment, another problem comes up. One of the five states that rescinded ratification, Kentucky, had rescinded ratification, but the acting governor vetoed the rescinding ratification. Article 5 of the Constitution says that three-fourths of the state legislatures have to ratify the amendment. It doesn't say that a state governor can veto the state legislature in this area. Now, with all that said, right now there are two bills in Congress, H.J. Res. 38 and S.J. Res. 5, which both would remove the original deadline if passed. Assuming, of course, that that's allowed, because once again, this is a huge gray area constitutionally because the Founding Fathers didn't think a situation like this would ever happen. So if one of these resolutions do get passed by Congress, we will simply have to wait and see how the courts decide.